with us on the line is uh, Imam Ibrahim Noonan. He's the Imam of the Galway Mosque in Ireland. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome to the Draft Time Show, Imam Noonan. Well, and thank you for asking me on again. Jazakallah uh, for being with us. Now, as I mentioned, you represented the Amdiya Muslim community in that joint committee with the Evangelics and Atheist Islands on uh, the admissions to the schools bill. Now, being a Muslim, why do you think that the government should not relax the admission rules when, when Muslims have their own schools as a result as well? And as uh, Michael mentioned, there are, I believe, two, two Muslim schools in Ireland. Well, I mean, the thing is, look, the, the problem is that we're facing here is that once you have Muslim children going into what is essentially a Catholic school, mm-hmm. which is literally, uh, to, to a degree, run by the church. The church decides as such uh, what they want taught in the school. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, the point being here is that I'm not in principle, in principle against faith schools uh, in that, as Michael mentioned earlier on, and I'm sure most people would agree, mm-hmm. if there's a faith school, by all means, if someone wants to go and set up their own faith school and they bring their own children there and they teach them their particular um, you know, brand of faith, whatever. Mm-hmm. The only problem that happens with schools like that would be you would be again segregating people. Now, what I mean by this is, if children go to a state-run school, not a religious sense, in a religious-run school, but a state, I mean, you can use the word circularism, okay, circular school. Okay, it, it, it should bring out the balance of uh, fairness and justice that will be given to all the children as far as education is kind of religious teaching. Now, uh, Michael mentioned earlier on he's not against religion being taught, and that's something that I uh, was very clear on when we, we first got together that, that you know religion should be taught in schools, yeah. um, but not um, one particular brand of religion and one particular version of religion. But this is what's happening at the moment in the schools in Ireland mm-hmm. that. I'll give you an example. For example, every morning in a Catholic school, which is which in principle is very good and morally and ethically, yeah. that the school starts every day with a prayer. Okay. Okay? Now, but the problem comes, some of the prayers are probably not in line with what some Muslims would believe or what some Jews would believe or indeed what atheists would believe or mm-hmm. etc. Okay. okay? Yeah. But all children are made pray that prayer. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's what this whole thing is all about as far as um, uh, from the religious point of view. I mean, as far as the admission is concerned, um, being admitted into a school, um, in Ireland, uh, what normally happens is unless you have a brother or sister or cousin that went to that school, you're not getting in. Okay. And secondly, uh, they do look at whether you're a Catholic first. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically... If, there's a, if a school has only 100 places mm-hmm. in that particular school, mm-hmm. the Catholics will get in first. Then whatever is left, it'll be the Church of Ireland presidents would get in next. And whatever is left at the end of that, if you're lucky, then they will allow uh, perhaps some Muslims to come in. So they don't have uh, they don't have a ratio meaning eighty percent needs to be theirs twenty percent theirs five percent. I think by 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 law, <clears throat> the, the government has insisted on Catholic schools that you have to take other faiths. Okay. Okay, but they don't tell you how much you have to take. But as long as you are fulfilling that requirement mm-hmm. uh, to a certain degree, then no one can really say anything to you. But the point being that it's first Catholic, second everyone else, and last whatever comes after that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Imam Ibrahim, you mentioned like some of the things that um, could be, uh, you know, totally different for, for example, somebody who's who's a Muslim going to that school. As you mentioned, the prayer in the morning, for example. But how is it with the? I mean, do do the students, if 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 it's a Muslim people, does he have any, he or she have any any choice to opt out from those prayers? From what I can see, from from primary school uh, infant to. Uh, junior primary, senior primary, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you know, unless you're coming into fifth and sixth year, perhaps uh, if a student asks that they don't want to participate, they may, they may allow that. But in secondary school, you you still have to have assemblies and you still have to have a, a certain element of 
uh, you have to be there while the mass is going on or the prayer is going on. Um, uh, and there is, in that level, second, uh, secondary school, you, there is an, an element where, okay, you don't have to attend it. Okay? Mm -hmm. But in the primary level and in infantry, you, you have to, from what I can see and what I've observed over the years uh, with my own kids now, who are all obviously Ahmadi Muslims, um, they, they normally are asked to stay and, and participate in that prayer. Okay. Now, my, I have taught my children what to do, how to do it, how to how to uh, do their own du'a when that prayer is going on. Um, but you will find most children will come home would have learned that particular prayer or prayers off by heart. Hmm. What, what, what if you as a parent or I as a parent would write, let's say, a note to the school? I mean, would they ignore it? Would Would that just, you know... Not be no, I wouldn't considered? say no, no. I would no, no. I, I wouldn't say no. That would be unfair. I mean, the, uh, you know, let me put it this way: too. when I when I when I was posted here as a missionary in two thousand three, I went to the local Catholic school because there was like 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 you mentioned already this this is basically ninety nine point nine Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I asked that I want to enroll my children in this particular school, and the first thing that was said to me was. We do realize, Mr. Noonan, that this is a Catholic school and we teach Catholicism in this school and all our ethics and all our, our mission statement is based on Catholic teaching. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, I, I understand that. But I said, I have no objection to observing, looking and listening. It'll be good for them. But I don't want them to participate in rituals. Yeah. In, in the Eucharist, in the Confirmation, or the, the Communion, or, you know, Mass, they can sit and observe. And most schools are very open to, okay, we understand, and yeah. we, we, we'll inform you about these things. But, unfortunately, my experience has been that uh, many teachers insist to their students, no, you have to go, and you will go. Okay. And I'm going from my own children's experience, which which uh, I was not always told straight away, that they were made uh, drink wine, take part in the Eucharist. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. These things have happened. So, um, you know, these things do go on. Hmm. And, uh, you know, for example, my daughter, as an example, my daughter uh, on Ash Wednesday, I'm sure you all know Ash Wednesday quite well, um, where the crucifix is put on, on the forehead of every, every Catholic. Um my daughter told a priest twice, I am not uh, a, a Catholic, I'm a Muslim. Mm -hmm. But the priest said, I know, and, and still put the cross and the ash on the forehead of my daughter. Wow. Okay? So this is what, this is, you know, uh, there, are, there are some priests who, who, who are forceful in that they mm -hmm. want Muslim children to uh, become Catholic. And they should, you know, they should, they should, listen to what a Catholic church is. Mm -hmm. so that, that does go on. Okay. Um, Imam Noonan, if, if children, now this is a, some sort of uh, same question that I asked Michael as well. If, now, if, if our children are not exposed to any kind of religious education by schools or by parents, I mean, in that case that you mentioned whatever happened to, to, to your daughter, I mean, that's, that's unfortunate, very tragic and shouldn't happen. But generally speaking, is just the idea, the concept of religion at all, of, of any other religion for that fact. How do you think they would develop a sense of, of acceptance for religious beliefs or people growing up in a society where um, there are people of all sorts of faiths, there's people of uh, no faith at all, uh, etc.? Um... I'm not sure if I understand your question. Are you asking that should there be faith taught in schools? No, I mean, if, or... if, if there was no such thing, if, if it wasn't taught, how would they develop a sense of, of understanding, of acceptance, okay, of tolerance? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am, yeah, I understand your question. I'm sorry. Um, well, I, I, you know, um, I have, when, when myself, uh, well, actually it was Michael who approached us, um, when, when he approached me about this, uh, on this uh, basis of human rights and discrimination, which mm -hmm. is going on within the schools. Um, as Mark, I think, mentioned already, that we do have our differences. And I told him that I absolutely believe that religion should be taught in school. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and the basis was on the basis of that children would learn ethics, morals, and principles, and virtues, 
and you know such things like compassion and, mm-hmm. and tolerance and um, kindness, etc. Um, and a role, a religion. Let's be clear. I, I, I'm very clear on this. Religion has its role in society. And being a religious person, a person who believes in God Almighty and the existence of God Almighty, I believe a religion has a positive role to play mm-hmm. in schools. Mm-hmm. Um, but the worry, I suppose, it would be for others would be that it shouldn't be forced down the throat of children. Okay. okay? Uh, um, for example, uh, the, it's more about teaching rather than preaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, in schools, about school in schools, you're meant to be educated, not not indoctrinated, yeah. mm. <laughs> not like this. So, um, what? The way the world is turning now is that there are loads of people in in Ireland who simply don't believe in God. They they choose that their children should have the choice not to believe in God, and that's their right, of course. No one can enforce that uh, on them. But um, is it is it is it? I mean, would a school be if there was a school which didn't teach religion at all? Um, would would there be an absence of of any moral ethical? Um, you know, uh, teaching. I, I would say that um, it is possible that you can have a, an atheist man who's very morally inclined and very tolerant and very peaceful, and he would teach those qualities to, to the children. Hmm. But at the end of the day, what may happen, and w- that definitely will happen, is that a child will ask at some point in their life, where are these qualities coming from? Hmm. Where do they, they derive from? And ultimately, it will turn back to um, some faith system. Okay. It, it will come from some faith system. I mean, um, common law uh, in Ireland, which is very similar to Britain, is based upon Christian teaching. Hmm. Uh, if you go back right, right back to the 18th, 16th and above centuries, you will find that the common law in Britain and Ireland were based upon the attributes and the morals and the qualities of what Christianity taught. So uh, you will find that these normally come from that kind of uh, faith background. So I do, I do think that, um, definitely I think, 100% I believe, that religion, faith has a role to play uh, in the moral training of children. Mm-hmm. Um, but what, 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 where the worry will come in, I suppose, is what's happening in Ireland at the moment, uh, and, what's, and what has been suggested uh, by the by the government and the educational committee, um, is a particular brand of Christianity and a particular brand mm. of Islam should be taught in the schools. Okay. And that's where that's where I came into it. That's where I got involved. I got yeah. involved on these bases. That that no, hang on, uh, who, which Christianity will be taught, mm-hmm. which Islam will be taught. Therefore. Uh, when I got involved with Michael and, and Nicholas and uh, Nick, who's of the Evangelist Ireland, uh, we wanted that we're not against, as Michael himself said, he's not against religion being taught in the school. Um, but if the government decides that the that the, the the version of Christianity is going to be the Catholic Church, mm-hmm. then of course you're going to have young children who are Protestants, Presbyterians, Evangelists, Anglians, yeah. who will be in the same school, and they will be forced to learn about Catholicism. Mm. And they will be told that is the only true version of Christianity. Mm. And unfortunately, uh, you know, the, the Islamic Society of Ireland, which has been chosen to teach Islam, obviously is going to give a brand of Islam, yeah. which um, may not entirely be in line with many other Muslims' beliefs. Indeed. Um, and that's what I'm, that's, that's what I'm, uh, how, why, one of the reasons I got involved in this is because I'm saying to the government, no, you, you, there must be separation of state and, and religion on this issue. Right. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm very much for. I mean, I I you know, like I said earlier on, my children have gone right through the whole Catholic system, and there has been ups and downs and bumps, as I mentioned already. Some things I mentioned, hmm. um, but uh, overall, I had no objection to them observing and listening because it was good for them. Yeah. Um, but um, the opposite would happen, and I've experienced this as well, where even though certain other faiths are taught within the Catholic system, but it is at times negativity is taught about another faith also. Hmm. Uh, you know, like they would talk about Islam to a certain point, but they would bring in some negative aspect of Islam or some negative aspect of Protestantism 
uh, or some negative aspect of atheism. I mean, an example would be, for example, um, recently, Fishman Wales actually uh, wrote an article, which I'm responding to at the moment, wrote an article suggesting that Islam, the Quran, teaches to kill Christians and Jews, that non-Catholics are basically infidels, and meaning providence, etc. Hmm. And also, atheists are demonic. So, if you're going to have teachers in, in Catholic schools and priests in Catholic schools with this mindset, you know, it, it, it would be against it. It would be religious discrimination. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to, trying to get. We're trying to get a balance in the schools in Ireland that look, look, for example, in Ireland right now, I cannot, I am unable to break into the universities, break in meaning talk about Islam or yeah. Ahmadiyyat, because the Islamic societies are preventing it. Okay? With the support of the administration, which is meant to be a secular based institution. So that's religious discrimination. So this is what, mm -hmm. this is what this whole, this whole, effort of the three of us is, is to try and get a just, fair uh, system uh, in the schools. All right. We're going to keep uh, the listeners posted on that one. Let's see how that develops. Imam Ibrahim Noonan, all the way from uh, Ireland, is the Imam of the Galway Mosque of the Ahmadi Muslim community. Thank you so much. Jazakallah. Thank you oh, thank very you. much for joining us once again. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. I'm enjoying it. Pray for <laughs> us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. God bless.